Hey everyone, welcome back to my Monday channel where we make gnomes and animals and today I'm going to share with you this adorable little bowling gnome. He's got a little bowling pin for a hat, got a little bowling ball. I'm going to show you how to make his little flexible arms. Check out his little bowling shoes. If you want to know how to make this little guy, stick around. I'll show you how. Thanks for watching. I love you guys. Okay, for this little guy, we're going to start with 11 and a half inch by 11 and a half inch piece of fabric. And I'm just using this in a cotton fabric that I got at Joann's. Put your cone right down in the very center of it and then just wrap the fabric around it. So you're going to kind of cradle it in there. And then go ahead and come down as close to the cone as you can and just pin it right up to the edge of that cone. And you can use any size cone you want. I'll give you the link in the description below which cone I use, but you can use this pattern to cut any size cone. Then you're going to cut your fabric about a half an inch from those um, pins all the way down and along the top. Then go ahead and remove your pins and we're going to start gluing our body together. Just remove your cone, put the two facing sides together and just going to glue right down that side. Okay, next we're just going to go ahead and slide our cone on down in there and go ahead and push it all the way to the top. And then we're going to take a couple of rubber bands and tie it around the top just to hold that in place while we do our hem. So go ahead and fold it up in the bottom and overhang it about a fourth of an inch over the ledge of that cone. And then we're going to trim off um, enough so that we can go ahead and get a nice hem on this. And I'm probably coming about maybe an inch from the edge or three quarters of an inch from the edge and cutting all the way around. And then we are going to tuck that under and then glue it down. And you're going to end up with about a quarter of an inch um, of a hem on this. Okay, just kind of take your time because you do want to make sure that your hem is pretty straight along the bottom. And then start gluing it in. And you don't need a lot of glue, just a you know, real fine bead of glue. Okay, then we're just going to turn it right side out. And then we're going to go ahead and make the base part. So take the same fabric, just, just draw your cone circle onto your fabric. And then you're going to cut it out about a half an inch from that edge, from where you drew that circle. And then we're just going to cut half inch slits all the way down around and you're just going to go down to that line that you drew. So just keep going all the way around until you have it completely um, cut open. Just half inch all the way around and then we're just going to start gluing it right to the bottom of our cone. Each one of those little tabs and some of them will overlap each other so just kind of take your time on this part. Okay, then we're just going to put our top right over the top of our cone and we're just going to glue down the very top part of it. Now make sure that you pull it down so it does overhang that edge. And then go ahead and put some glue in the top just to hold it in place. And then I'm going to put a rubber band around it too just to make sure that it stays there while I'm doing the rest of it. Okay, next I'm just going to take some rickrack just to cover up that top part of that seam. And then I'm just going to go all the way around and glue it right on onto that seam line. And you'll see what I'm talking about when you get into it. You, you can see where you folded it up. Right there where that fold and your fabric starts, that's where you're going to put that rick wrap. And just go all the way around. Just make sure that your seam does end in the back where the back seam of the fabric does. Okay, next I'm taking a quarter inch by six inch dowel stick and I sharpen both ends with a pencil sharpener. And then I'm just going to mark this at three inches and I'm going to cut this in half. So each one of your little legs is going to be three inches. And then I'm going to take one of those hair noodles. I'm going to pull the wire out of them and then I'm going to cut two of these at two inches each. And then I'm going to cut them and then I'm going to make sure that they're exactly the same length. Then I'm going to go ahead and run my stick on through them. Now make sure that once you get your stick put through these that they are the same size because the, the noodle tends to squish down a little bit. Just make sure that they are the same size. Okay, next I'm going to take two of the Dollar Tree shoes, little party favor shoes. And I'm going to put two 5 16 inch nuts into each one of these for weights. Now if you can't find these shoes, I have a pattern for these. 
that you can make from scratch and I'll put that in the description below as well. Then we're going to take um, some felt and I'm just going to trace the shoes onto the bottom of them and that's what we're going to use for our sole. And then when you cut these out you want to cut them out about a quarter of an inch away from the circle that you just drew because we need enough room to attach these to the shoe itself. Okay, next we're just going to go ahead and glue our shoe right do, down to our sole and just kind of put it in the center there. You only need to really just put it on the very back part. And then we're going to cut little slits all the way around so that we can glue this up to the side of the shoe to hold it in place. And you start attaching those tabs right up to the side of that shoe. Make sure you get it as close as you can. And then you're going to do exactly the same thing to the other shoe. Okay, next we're going to build our shoes. We're going to take a 2 inch by 6 inch piece of fabric and we're going to glue up one side. And then we're going to glue up the other side as well. Okay, next we're just going to glue it to the back of the shoe and go all the way around the shoe. Now you don't have to glue up the sides so much. Um, I did a little bit when I first started, but you just kind of want to stay around the base of the shoe. You do definitely don't want to glue in the very front of the shoe because we are going to make a tongue and close that in. You're just making a complete loop around the shoe. And then go ahead and glue straight down the back to seal it in. Then I'm going to draw the front in. I'm going to glue a little bit at the top part of that shoe and just pull that front part in like it's going to be the tongue of the shoe. And then I'm going to go ahead and start gluing this in. I'm going to pull my sides over a little bit like that and I'm going to glue down both sides of that on the inside part. And you don't have to do this like this. You could just sew, you could just um, glue this all together. You don't have to sew it, but I'm going to sew some um, laces in it here in a minute just to kind of make it look more like bowling shoes. And then just get both of those flaps glued in on both sides. And then go ahead and tuck the whole entire shoe in and glue it in. Then I'm going to take some white embroidery floss and I'm just going to make laces with it. So you start at one side, go through it, and then you're going to start looping it up. Now just kind of look at it as you're going. Go ahead and pull your sides out so you can kind of see how you're crisscrossing it so you kind of make sure that you get them even. So I'm pulling that one through and then I'm going to cross the other one just to kind of see where it is at first so I know where I need to put my second one. And then I'm just swapping sides on my needle so I can go with the other side. And then I'm just going to tie it in a, in a bow at the top and then trim the excess ribbon off. And then I went ahead and put a little bit of glue down at the bottom of my laces after I got them um, tied in and cut off just so that the um, embroidery floss wouldn't separate and open up. It's kind of twisted after you put a little bit of glue on them. And then do the other shoe exactly the same way. Next I'm just going to take some little white ribbon and I'm just going to go all the way around the bottom of the shoe to kind of make the sole. Kind of stretch it as you're going around because you want to make sure that you get it pretty smooth. And then do the other shoe exactly the same way. Okay, next I'm just going to take a round circle punch. and I'm just finding a piece that fits the back of this. It's about three quarters of an inch. I punched out two holes with um, craft foam and I'm just taking a number eight that I made on my Cricut to put in the center to make these look like bowling shoes. And then I'm just going to glue these right to the back of the shoes. Now if you don't have some kind of a cutting machine, you know, you could use a black marker and just draw a, a number on it. Okay, next I'm taking a 3 inch by 3 inch piece of denim and this is a scrap I had. I'm just going to go ahead and glue down one side. And these are going to be for his pants. And then I'm just going to wrap this right around my little noodle and I'm going to glue it down. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the opposite side. 
Okay, next go ahead and cut your slits all the way down to the noodle. And then we're going to trim off any excess. Just want to get it kind of short. You just want enough to cover the top part of that noodle so you don't see it. And then do exactly the same thing with the opposite leg. Okay, next I'm just going to go ahead and glue the leg right into the shoe and make sure that your seam is facing the back. And then make sure that they both are standing up straight. Okay, next we're just going to go ahead and cut the beard out and we're going to cut it at two inches long by two and a quarter inches wide. And then just cut in a U shape all the way around there until you get it cut out. Just come off all the excess hair. Okay, then we're going to come down three and three quarters inches from the top and that's where we're going to attach our beard. Just make sure that your seam is in the back. We're going to attach the feet. Just go ahead and push them into the holes. You can just make them right in the center, a hole on both sides, and go ahead and push them in. Then we're going to go ahead and glue them in. And you're going to put a little bit of glue inside of the um, cone, and then you're going to put a little bit of glue on top of the um, shoe itself, or on top of the leg itself. And then do the same thing for the other one, and then just let them dry really good between times. Okay, next we're going to make the hat, and this is 10 inches wide by 10 and a half inches tall, and you're just going to fold it over on the 10 inch side. And then we are going to um, make like an R. We're going to come up from the bottom about an inch and a half, and we're going to just start curving it in. Now you're going to curve it in until about this point right here, which is about at least two and a half inches wide, and then just going to make an R. And that's about three inches from the top is where you start making that R top. And this is going to make the hat for the um, bowling pin. And then we're just going to go ahead and glue it all the way around. And then just leave the bottom open because we're going to turn it right side out here in a minute. Okay, and then before we turn it right side out, we're going to go ahead and put a cuff in here. And this is going to be a one and a half inch cuff. Just make sure it's one and a half inches on both sides when you get it folded up. And then we're going to just start gluing it in. And you don't need a lot of glue. Just put a little bead of glue in there and kind of stretch it as you're going so that it does glue all the way around without any kind of a buckle in it. And then go ahead and turn your hat right side out. Okay, now we're going to start stuffing this at the top because we are going to make a bowling pin shape for this hat. So go ahead and get um, plenty of it put up in the top there. And then we are, going to, we are going to sew these two pieces together. Just trying to make it a little bit more round and not so pointy on the top. But you want to make sure that you get that pushed out there real well. And then we're going to sew it up. Just We're going to do just maybe one or two stitches from the back to the front at the very top. And you might have a little bit of trouble right there because I did too where you had glue and you're trying to go through it with a needle. But it will go. And I'm using a pretty strong thread. If you're not going to use a strong thread then you probably need to do a couple extra stitches on this. And then we're going to go ahead and fill it up a little bit more. And you just want enough to where it'll come down over the top part of the cone and the cone will be attached right where that ball ends. So make sure that it comes all the way down where you have, him on, have it on the hat and then go ahead and put a rubber band around it to tie it off. And you're right at the tip of the cone there. And then go ahead and make a cuff. You're just going to make a half inch cuff around the bottom. Then go ahead and pull the hat down. You're going to add another rubber band, just about a half an inch from the other rubber band. So it should start to look like a, um, a bowling pin. And then we're going to start stuffing the sides so he kind of rounds out at the sides like a bowling pin does. And I put quite a bit of stuffing in here. I mean, he was pretty, pretty snug. But just kind of, you know, roll it in your hands. Kind of make sure that he's pretty smooth, too. Just make sure that the hat is pretty smooth, and then we'll glue these all in in a little while. 
Next, we're going to make the hands. We're going to cut two pieces of wire at five inches in length. And then I'm going to use this cause clay because it is flexible. And then we're going to build some arms in a little bit too. And it does that it does bend. And we're just using the hand mold. And I'm just going to take the um, fingers and I'm going to roll them out and fill the finger cavities first. That's the best way to do it. That way you make sure that you get them completely sealed in there. And they, they will come out as one unit without a problem. And then go ahead and um, put the thumb on as well and then go ahead and then fill the rest of the cavity and just kind of push it all down there together and then it will mold into a hand. And then just kind of roll it with your hand fingers just to kind of make sure that you see the complete shape of the hand and then go ahead and take your hand out. And then you're going to do the exact same thing to the other hand, but you're going to use the opposite side of that mold. Okay, next I'm going to take some black um, oven baked clay. This is just regular oven baked clay, Sculpey 3. I'm going to roll it in a ball, and I'm going to take some foil and start rolling it into a ball. Now this is going to be for the bowling ball. So you want to make sure that you get most of the foil. You don't want to have a lot of clay on it. You want to have mostly foil so that it is light enough for him to hold it. And just kind of keep layering it up until you get it to about the size you want it. I think mine ended up being like a one inch bowling ball. And you can make it however, however big or however small you want to. I'm just kind of gauging, putting it in his hand and seeing where I want it. Then I'm going to take some the black um, clay and I'm just going to wrap it completely around the ball to seal up every bit of that foil. And then I'm going to roll it into a ball in my hand as well. Now that's about what size I end up doing it with. Okay, next I'm just taking a little sharpened dowel stick and I'm going to poke three holes in it like a bowling ball. And just kind of push them in there pretty far. We're going to try to put his fingers in there, but then I ended up not putting his fingers in there and I just cut them short to go onto the ball. And you'll see here in a minute how I did that. Just make sure that your ball is still round when you get done doing this. And that's where I'm trying to put them inside of there. And then go ahead and um, bend your hand on around to hold the ball. And then I'm going to come back in with some scissors and just cut those little fingers short. Push the thumb in like it's going to go into the bottom hole. And so I'm just going to go ahead and just cut them right there. Just a little tip of them off of there. And I'm just going to go ahead and push them up to the ball to hold them in place. And then wrap the rest of the hand around it. Okay, next I'm just going to go ahead and attach my wire to my hand. Kind of go all the way up till you get to the fingers and then stop. And then I'm going to add a little bit of oven bake um, adhesive to the ball and to the hand. Just to make sure that they stay together once I bake them. And then go ahead and do the same thing with the other hand. Go ahead and put your wire in that one. And then we're going to go ahead and bake them at 275 degrees for 25 minutes. Okay, while those are baking, I'm just going to take some embroidery floss in red. And I'm going to tie it around the top two rubber band areas on this um, bowling pin. And that will give the accent color like a regular bowling ball would be. I mean a bowling pin would be. Okay, now that the hands are finished baking, we're just going to go ahead and bend the wire three inches and we're going to start making our arms. And you only want your arms to go up to that three inch point. Just kind of roll out that same clay and then go ahead and put it over the wire. Go ahead and bend your wire up and then just slide it all the way down and you're going to you're going to blend it with the hand. Now your hands are already cooked so you don't have to worry about messing it up but just kind of run that all the way down to the bottom and kind of blend it together. And you're going to do exactly the same thing with the other arm the exact same length. Just get them blended in real good and then you're going to bake them again at 275 degrees for 20 minutes. Okay, next we're going to make the sleeves. We're going to measure three by three and a half inches on our fabric. And we are going to fold it up on the three inch, three and a half inch side up three quarters of an inch. Because we're going to make a cuff on the outside of the shirt. And these are going to be short sleeves. And do the same thing with the second one. 
just kind of make sure that they are even. And then we're going to fold it up about a quarter of an inch or three eighths of an inch and go ahead and glue that into. And that's going to be the outside cuff for our shirt. Okay, next we're going to fold it over and we're going to glue facing sides together. So just fold that right over and let that dry and then do the same thing with the other one. This way we'll have a nice seam down the back of his shirt. And then go ahead and turn them right side out. Next we're just going to attach them to our arms and I'm coming down about two inches from the bottom of the tip of the finger and then I'm going to take a rubber band and wrap it around the, the top part here. Now you want to make sure that your seam is facing the inside palm of the shirt, of the hand. And just wrap a rubber band around there pretty tightly. And you're going to do that with both of them. Okay, then we're going to just glue the top part of that wire um, to that fabric. Just kind of twist it because that is going to go inside of the body. And do the same thing on this one here. Just make sure that they are pretty flush against that wire because we are going to stick the, that top part of that fabric into the body as well. Okay, next we're going to go ahead and cut our wire. And we're just going to have one inch from the bottom of the hand to the end of that wire. And then go ahead and bend it over. And then do the same thing with that one as well. You just want one inch of wire from the edge of that hand over. Because that's all we're really going to need to put it into that cone. Okay, next I'm figuring out exactly where I want to put that arm. And I'm coming up three inches from the bottom of that cone. That's where that's going to be. Um, you're going to cut your hole and attach your arm. Okay, for our second arm, we are going to bend it. And we're going to make it like he's bolt throwing the ball. So you want to go ahead and bend it forward. And then bend the wire towards the body. We're going to come up three inches from the base right here, and that's where we're going to cut our hole to attach our other arm. You just want to make it where his hand, his palm is up. And then we're going to start gluing these in. Just that That's why I use the cause clay, because it does bend. And then just go ahead and attach your arm and push your arm all the way in there so you don't see the top of that fabric. Okay, and then we're going to glue the other side in as well. But just make sure his arm does go all the way into there, the top part of all that fabric. Okay, then go ahead and pull your hat on down, and then we're going to start gluing it in. Now, don't glue the front where the nose goes yet. Just glue around the arms and around the back, and then across the top of the other arm as well. Then we're just going to go ahead and glue his nose in. And this is just a 15 millimeter half bead. Just going to lift his hat up and put it right up underneath there. Next, I just cut some vinyl. I cut a bowling ball and a bowling pin. I'm just attaching it to the front. Now, I just used regular permanent vinyl. I didn't have any iron on. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video today. If you like these kind of videos, be sure and give me a thumbs up. If you want to see future videos, be sure and subscribe and ring that bell to be notified when I have a new video upload. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it.